Hello and welcome to you, another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm taking a look at uh, Doctor Who Warlock's Cross by Steve Lyons um, Yeah, so you've got the Doctor there, interestingly enough in the sort of 1996 TV movie uh, costume and attire which is interesting because that makes me immediately think that this story is set right near the latter end of his uh, timeline and his, uh, you know, uh, yeah, timeline, uh, which would make sense considering how he's sort of characterised, I guess. Um, then you got two other characters whose names I can't even remember. Um, Skull, TARDIS, some helicopters, uh, this creature thing, uh, the Doctor Who logo, like in the old sort of Sylvester McCoy sort of style, Warlock's Cross by Steve Lyons, Big Finish, We Love Stories, uh, Doctor Who, Brand New Adventures, Full Cast Audio Drama, uh, on the spine you've got Sylvester McCoy sort of face there, BBC, Doctor Who, the sort of new Jodie Whittaker logo, uh, Warlock's Cross, 244, meaning it's the 244th release in the month range, uh, as well as Big Finish. Um, then you've got Doctor Who, again the Jodie Whittaker logo, the synopsis of the story, the running time which is 120 minutes so it's two hours long, and the cast list. Uh, then on the inside you've got the disc, which is basically, I think, the f it might not be the first time that they've done this, but it's one of the newest releases that I've got in the month of range, uh, and therefore it's the first one that I might have that has the sort of cover printed on to the, obviously, disc. Um, and then you've got the sort of uh, production notes there as well, as well as the sort of reversible cover as well, sort of option, which is always good. Um, yeah, I mean, this might be a short review in so much as this story was very anticlimactic and boring, <laughs> in my opinion. I will try and sort of say some positives and that of the things that I can even recall. Um, and I say that knowing full well that, I'm not going to lie, I kind of started falling asleep uh, towards the latter end of the story. I mean, I guess at least in something like that I listened to recently, which was the 8th Doctor Time War box set, Volume 2... I listened to all four of those stories, and at least the story in the Garden of uh, in the Garden of Death, at least it's only an hour long. Whereas if a monthly range or classic Who story, especially like a six part classic Who story, isn't that great, then you do really feel like you've kind of just wasted a lot of time on a uh, naff story, as it were. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what I feel like with this story. It's not, again, it's not the worst story I've ever watched or listened to or, or even read in like Titan Comics case or, or whatever, you know, it's not a Delta in the Bannerman sort of situation. My God, is that episode awful? But it's not great by Big Finish's standard. I think the lowest I've given a Big Finish audio is, I want to say, a 5 out of 10. Granted, I could you could argue there's a case for you know, re-listen, you know, uh, I could re-listen to this anywhere between, uh, like, you know, a year from now, anywhere between a year, two years, or shorter time span, and really love this story, but it just kept dragging on and on and on, um, it wasn't very action-packed, which, I mean, the previous release, Hour of the Sidemen in the trilogy, was very much action-packed, maybe that's why they decided to take it less action-packed. There is this weird monster creature there, but that features, like, maybe twice for, like, a whole a whole audio track time length of maybe, what, ten minutes at most, really? Um, it's very... It kind of reminds me of Series 7... Uh, no, not Series 7. Series 11, sorry, in so much as... It's very much about the characters and the people who are the bad guys, almost, and that there's that human threat, as it were. Um, and I know that's what everyone kept saying with Series 11, and that's why it was better or, or worse or whatever, uh, depending on your opinion and that. I think that's just sort of... I fall down the middle, as usual, with these things. I just sort of thought... Um, I think Doctor Who, when it does do more the human characterization. Sometimes it does it too much to the point where the aliens get left behind and the threat and the intensity and the more Doctor Who whimsical nature of the show gets left behind. But there are times where the Doctor Who nature and the sci-fi MacGuffins and sort of timey-wimey stuff get too much and it bogs and it gets bogged down in that and it leaves the sort of grounded, more 
character-based groundedness of the show and the heartfeltness behind, you know? And I think that's the sign of a good Doctor Who story is that it you can have your cake and eat it in so much as you can have both those um both those things. You can you can have, you know, in say Genesis of the Daleks, it's quite grim. It's it's about the characters though of the Dals and the the Khalids and Sarah and Harry and and whatever, but it's it's whimsically sci-fi and 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 dystopian future and and dark and that, um, or pyramids of Mars or whatever else you know, really phenomenal stories or even as I say, Hour of the Sidemen, you know. But it you don't nothing gets compromised in those stories for me at least personally. Whereas this one, as I say, leans very much into the more character stuff, which would wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that. There's no visuals, and so I can't really picture in my head who the people are and why they're acting the way they are. And that, in that respect, it kind of reminds me of 007, which is not a good comparison because I detest and really find... Well, okay, detest might be a bit of a strong word, but definitely find absolutely boring the uh, <laughs> James Bond films. I find them boring, dull uninteresting and they have the benefit of having visuals and that because I can never follow them I never know what's happening and then there's just spec big explosions and spectacle and it's like oh okay but I don't know why that happened you know this story kind of reminds me of a you know uh, inferno third doctor story meets sort of but kind of put into the latter end of you know doctor who season 26 and all it's uh, quite horror-esque, like Philip Hinchcliffe Doctor Who as well, you know, which again is fine, but I'm not a massive fan of horror either, surprisingly enough. Um, there are quite a few laughs and, and jokes and a few references to remembrance in the way the Doctor speaks about, you know, uh, ripples and time and that and, you know, chucking a pebble into the time stream sort of thing and there are interesting bits and Sylvester McCoy does do a brilliant performance and you know uh gives it his all as much as he can do the sound design is impeccable that goes without saying but I think this story kind of reminds me of the 1996 TV movie in so much as the only thing that's giving that is holding this story higher in regard of for me, in regard, higher regards is the Doctor and the actor playing the Doctor. Other than that, everything else that I do like is very surface level, very superficial. Um, there are quite a few different ideas here, so it's just the execution and the pacing. It's just so long and drawn out and dull and boring, you know, uh, which Doctor Who should never be. But again, it might be the case, it might be a case of the previous stories that I just watched, I mean, listened to even, which, as I say, were four one-hour stories and that in the 8th Doctor uh, Time War book set, Volume 2. So, you know, I could maybe have said the same thing about the Heliax Rift or Hour of the Sidemen, that they were really boring because of the previous listen that I, I just uh, experienced. You know, that the format is so different and that, you know, um, so you can tell uh, longer more longer and more sort of complex stories but I don't know I mean it to a certain extent it kind of feels like a Moffat story for for lack of a better term and comparison you know it it feels like it's almost complex for the sake of it you know uh and and that and I don't know I like the idea and the setting of Warlock's Cross uh it's just not as great as it could have been, and and that, and it kind of just feels like a, a seventh Doctor version of Heliax Rift, kind of maybe, but just not as interesting. And the interesting, there is some decent ideas with the whole unit must fall thing and and that, but they never really quite tackle it in the way that I expected them to, and um, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, you know, I like Last Jedi and that. You know, was totally different to what I thought it was going to be. Um, I know that pissed loads of people off, and uh, and I get that because again, in this case, uh, I thought they were going to maybe go this way, but they went that way, um, and it just so happened going that way. In my personal opinion, was much more boring, <laughs> um, maybe, 
uh, than going the other way, whatever that would even entail going the other way. But, um, yeah, I'd give Warlock's Cross a 6 out of 10. Uh, yeah, pretty poor, dull, boring story and really naff way to conclude the unit trilogy. Um, I kept just wanting it to end. As I say, I kind of dozed off a bit towards the end. Um, so if I'm not sounding like I'm spoiling a lot of the story, it's predominantly because I can't even be uh, like can't even recall a lot of it. It was very disengaging because of the fact. Oh, it was boring. Therefore, it was being. Oh, I was disengaged because it was boring. Even uh, in my opinion, hopefully you guys like the story. I hope if you do pick this one up, you enjoy it and you you tell me that. I should like it uh, in a polite, nice way, but um, but yeah, for me it was a, a 6 out of 10. Thanks for watching, comment, rate, and subscribe.